as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police. In his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. Hun King! Hun! Husky! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike and the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Hello? This is Jay Michael, announcer on the challenge of the Yukon radio program. Could you tell me what your family had for breakfast this morning? I sure can. Our family enjoyed Quaker puffed rice with milk and fruit. And tomorrow morning, we're going to eat Quaker puffed wheat. Oh, there's a family that's a breakfast happy family. Yes, there's nothing like a breakfast you really go for. Like, for instance, delicious Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. These ready-to-serve king-size grains are shot from guns, actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. Tomorrow morning, why don't you enjoy this thrifty, tasty, easy-to-serve breakfast treat? Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat? King knew that his master was unhappy about something. After the sergeant had harnessed the team that morning, he had patted King on the head and said, All we have to do today, King, is drive up to Christmas Creek and deliver these papers to the miners on the bench line. Simple enough. It's going to be one of the most difficult jobs we've ever had. Duty can be mighty unpleasant for him. The words meant nothing to King. The tone was enough. He wished he could do something to cheer his master up and he made the team give one of its best performances that day. They reached the creek shortly after noon and drove on past the company buildings. Then they followed the trail that led to the higher ground above the creek. Now they were approaching a cabin. A man who was standing out in front called a greeting. Hello, Harry. King knew the man. He was one of the sergeant's best friends. King liked his face and his ready laugh. He hoped this friend could make the sergeant feel better. Oh, hello, hello. Hello, King. What are you doing up here, Harry? <laughs> Hank and Nancy have taken me in. Broke again? <laughs> Naturally. I'm paying for my board by digging gravel. You won't be for long. What's that? Is your brother inside? Oh, yes. So is Nancy. We've already had dinner, but she'll find something for you. I won't be a welcome guest today. Why not, Sergeant? You'll hear all about it in a minute. Oh, it's that company lawsuit. Yes, Harry. But come on in. Nancy, Hank, here's Sergeant Preston. Oh, hello, Sergeant. Hi there. You don't have to tell me why you're here. Don't I, Hank? Of course not. You've come to arrest Harry. What's he been up to? Don't say things like that, Hank. I almost wish it were true, Nancy. Oh, you do not. Now, come on out in the kitchen. I have a bone for you, Oh, uh, Wait, I... Nancy. Uh, what? What's wrong? I have to give Hank this paper. Here. Uh, what is it, Sergeant? Court order, restraining you from working this claim what? until the company suit's been settled. Oh, no. Well, that isn't fair. Well, I don't think it is either, but there's nothing I can do about it. Oh, Nancy wasn't blaming you, Sergeant. He knows that, Hank. It's Carstairs I'm blaming. Yeah, let me get this straight. We have to wait for the new government survey to be made and for the court to decide where the company's land ends, mine begins. That's right. Maybe six months, perhaps a year. These suits drag on. And during all that time, I can't wash out any gravel. I'm sorry, Hank. But, well, how can we live? How can we get money enough to eat, let alone pay for lawyers and all the rest of it? We can't, I guess. It means we'll have to sell out to Carstairs. He'll only give you a fraction of what this land is worth. Naturally. Why do you think he started the suit in the first place? I won't let you sell to him. It isn't fair. There's nothing else to do. Can't you borrow money somewhere, Hank? On what security? I can't prove I own the claim. Isn't there some way of hurrying things up, Sergeant? If we went to the judge and explained, I'm oh, sure we'd... Oh, it wouldn't not... do any good. Carstairs would find some way to delay things. But you don't need much money. 
Enough to live for a year, enough for lawyers' fees, and... Three or four thousand dollars might just as well be a million. Well, you certainly don't have to sell right away. You can wait a little while and something may turn up. I might be able to raise some money. How? Different ways. I've grub-staked quite a few people. If any of them happen to strike gold, they'd pay me back. Yeah, sure, but that probably won't happen. Well, you're not the only one with a claim, Hank. Everybody up here is involved in the suit. Can't you all get together and pool your money? Well, I'm the only one who has any cash. Mine's about gone. Well, would it do any good to go to Carstairs? I doubt it. I can't believe that anyone could be so unfair. Well, I'll have a talk with him, darling, but I'm afraid it won't do any good. Carstairs was living in Dawson for the winter. And the following day, Hank drove back with the sergeant. He found Carstairs in his office and ready enough to talk with him. But when he had finished, the head of the company laughed at him. <laughs> I, I've never heard anything so ridiculous. I had an idea you might feel that way about it. How well should I feel? Our contention is that we own your land. Why should we let you take gold out? You of don't it? own my land. Well, the courts will decide. They've already decided that you can't work the claim until the case is settled. Mm. What's your proposition? Proposition? I have none. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do. You're willing to buy the land. Well, I must admit there's a nuisance value in your claimed ownership. How much will you pay? $2,000. Two thousand dollars. Two. Well, that's robbery. The ground's been proven. You know there's gold there. And it belongs to me. Two thousand dollars. Not a penny more. My Carstairs. I don't have to do business with crooks. I'm not starving yet. Hank returned to the creek. When he had told Nancy and Harry of Carstairs' offer, Harry announced that he was going to make a trip to Whitehorse. What for? I think I can raise some money there. Oh, look, you're a nice guy, Harry, but don't try to kid me. You haven't got a chance. Don't be too sure of that, Hank. All I ask is that you wait until I come back before you do anything. Promise that you won't sell until then. Oh, I won't sell till I have to. Until our supplies run out. That gives me plenty of time. I'll start for White Horse in the morning. Harry stopped in Dawson and told the sergeant he was making a trip to White Horse. Actually, he had no intention of going there at all. He made sure that a number of people saw him take the Yukon Trail to the south. Then, ten miles outside of Dawson, he crossed to the western bank of the river and headed north. Two days later, he was camped in a wooded ravine halfway between Christmas Creek and Dawson. He stared into his campfire for hours that night, and finally he knew that his mind was made up. He was going through with it. It isn't wrong. Carstairs is a thief if ever there was one. It isn't wrong to steal from him. The trail between Christmas Creek and Dawson wound through the hills... And at noon on the following day, Harry was waiting in a clump of woods at the top of one of them. He wore an old parka. The lower half of his face was covered by a bandana. Nervously, he fingered his guns as he watched the sled coming up the hill toward him. It was a supply sled, and it belonged to the company. All the gold that had been washed out during the past week would be on board. There were two men with it. You don't like it, do you? Well, what about Hank and Nancy? Do you want to see them lose their claim? Do you want Carstairs to get away with his dirty deals? Maybe you don't like it. But you're going through with it. The sled was nearing the top of the rise. Harry waited until the last minute. Then he stepped from the cover of the trees and leveled his guns at the two men. Up with your hands. Stop your team. I want your gold. Hand it over and you won't get hurt. You'll get no gold from this sled. <laughs> You, you killed him. I doubt it. I shot for his arm. You are hit, too. It's nothing but a scratch. Now, don't you try anything, mister. I'm not. First, I'll take your guns. There. Now, where's the gold? It's in that bag. On the front of the sled. Not bad. You'll never get away with this. I am getting away with it. You got something you can use for a bandage? You want me to bandage you? No. That man on the sled. And hurry it up. Okay. There's a first aid kit here. Harry watched the driver bandage his companion's wound. And then... All right, you can go now. Go? Get moving. Get that man into Dawson as fast as you can. Yeah. Push! Push on! 
driver cracked his whip over the heads of the team. They took off down the trail. Harry waited until the sled had disappeared around a bend before he turned back into the woods where his own team was hidden. He made a campfire and bandaged his own wound. Then he started for the north. The cabin where he intended to hide out was 20 miles away. Must! Must on! It was rough country, and there were many small streams. Wherever there was glare ice, he traveled over it in order to make his trail harder to follow. And he drove the team hard. But suddenly, he began to feel weak, and he realized that his wound was still bleeding. He halted the dogs and tried to stop it. It was impossible. He must make the most of the strength he had left. So he drove on, and finally, through a mist of pain, he saw the cabin. But there was something wrong. Oh! Oh, there! Oh! Oh, no. No, it can't be. There was a dog team out in front of the cabin. There was smoke pouring from the stovepipe that projected through the roof. Someone was living in the cabin he had thought to be deserted. His hiding place was gone. There's nothing to do about it. No help. I can't go on. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Folks, step right this way. Listen to this. Today we present to you Levram the Mental Marvel. Yes, here he is. Spell his name backwards and you get Marvel. Got it? Levram the Mental Marvel. He will now perform feats of the mind that stagger the imagination. He will answer questions that will positively amaze you. Now for the first question. Mental Marvel, are you ready? I am ready. What name is listed on page 1,497 of the Chicago Telephone Directory? In the right-hand column, 60 names down from the top. The name you seek is the Quaker Oats Company. The Mental Marvel is absolutely right. Amazing. It is the Quaker Oats Company, maker of delicious Quaker puffed wheat, And Quaker Puff Rice, the ready-to-serve breakfast cereals shot from guns. And now let us test the Mental Marvel's amazing ability in arithmetic. Tell me, Mental Marvel, quick now, how much is 192 divided by 16? Take away 10 and add 6. The answer is 8. 8 is correct. Remember that number. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are giant premium grains of wheat or rice exploded up to eight times normal size. That's what makes wheat or rice shot from guns crisp and tender, bigger and better tasting. And now for the final question. What breakfast makes a hit with many a He-Man Hollywood movie star? That's easy. Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice with milk and fruit. Right you are. And fellas and girls, you don't have to be a mental marvel to know the answer to what makes the swellest tasting breakfast ever. Just one taste and you'll say, it's Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice, topped with milk and fruit. What's more, wheat or rice shot from guns is nourishing, good for you. That's because Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. So take a tip. Ask Mom to look for those famous big red and blue Quaker packages. Tomorrow, get delicious, nutritious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice shot from guns. Now to continue our story. After the holdup, the company driver brought his wounded partner into Dawson and left him at Doc Munson's. Then he reported the robbery to Carstairs, who took him to the Northwest Mounted Headquarters at once. There, he told his story to the inspector and Sergeant Preston. $10,000, Inspector, and I want quick action. You'll get it. I'm assigning you to the case, Sergeant. Very well, sir. You know where to start, don't you? I've already started. I have the man's description. I know he's been wounded. Well, it may not have been bad, but Sandy hit him. It was one of those miners up on the bench land above Christmas Creek. Your driver didn't recognize him, Carstairs. That doesn't matter. It was Hank Manners. I'm sure of it. And I want an immediate arrest. Uh, We don't make arrests until we're sure we have the right man. I'm telling you. This was his way of getting even for that injunction. The sergeant will use his own methods. Thank you, sir. He'll start at the scene of the crime and follow the man's trail. Try to follow what you mean. 
Hey, the robber may, may have gone east, west, north, or south. He's had half a day's start. There's only one way to get quick results. And how's that? Money. I'm going to post a reward. Half of the gold that was stolen, if the man is captured and the gold recovered by six o'clock tomorrow night. You have my authority to pay it out to anyone who brings him in, Inspector. We don't need rewards for doing our job. I tell you, the sergeant and his methods won't get results. When they hear about the reward on Christmas Creek, things will start to happen. Hank Manners did it. The others know it. They'll turn him in for $5,000. It would mean a great deal to any of them, that's sure. With $5,000, for instance, Hank Manners could fight you in court and save his claim. Yeah, just as I thought you were on their side. The sergeant isn't on the side of anyone who's committed a crime. I have my own ideas on the subject, Inspector. I'm posting a reward. As you wish. It will be paid to anyone who brings in the robber, with the exception of members of the force. Well, I intended to make that stipulation myself. It's been made for you. But it isn't necessary. Because it won't be the sergeant who captures this crook. If you'll excuse me, Inspector, I'll get started. Go right ahead. I have complete confidence in you. Thank you, sir. One, King. It was a strange case for King. A confusing case. He and the sergeant reached the scene of the holdup late that afternoon. The sergeant picked up a stained bandana and held it out to King. This belonged to the holdup man, King. We've got to get him. Don't you understand, boy? We've got to get him. No, King didn't understand. He knew the sergeant wanted him to follow this scent. But why did he use that grim tone of voice when he was talking about his friend? Perhaps the friend needed their help and the sergeant was merely worried. King picked up Harry's trail easily enough. But a few minutes later, he was leading the sergeant's team along. Good boy! On, King! On! At that same moment, Harry was hiding the gold in the woods. Then, with his last remaining strength, he climbed aboard his sled and drove across the clearing to the cabin. Oh, oh there. Hold oh, on. A big, hard-featured man opened the door of the cabin. What do you want? I, I've been hurt. I want to rest for a little while. You can't stop here. But I've got to. I can't. Oh. Harry lost his grip on the back of the sled and slipped to the ground. Hey, Jake, come here. This guy's passed out. Right. Stop the bullet. Looks like he's done for. Yeah, what do we do with him? I don't know. Depends on who and what he is. We'll take him inside and decide what to do with him later. All right. He's there. Harry was carried into the cabin and placed on a cot. A blanket was thrown over him. But otherwise, the men gave him no care. An hour later, he became delirious. Oh. Put your hands. Get him up. Hey, Lou. Come in. Listen to this guy. What's he say? Yeah, listen. I'll take your gun. Sounds like you held somebody up. I want the gold. Carstairs can steal, so can I. In over that gold, I got any gold it. on his sled? No, oh, just supplies and some clothes. Uh, maybe he hid it someplace. Maybe he didn't get it. Maybe they got him instead. Yeah, we'll find out. Uh, you can't make any real sense in what he's saying now. Uh-huh. Yeah, take a look at his wound. Fix him up some uh-huh. enough to bring him around. Uh, yeah. Then we'll get some sense out of him. People. Yeah. And go on. Better hide it first. Hide it good. On the rocks. Make sure I remember. Uh, uh, red rock. Did you hear that? Yeah, uh, he hid something, all right. A red rock, he said. I wonder if we can follow his back trail. It's dark, Lou. Well, let's try it anyway. Right. Get a lantern, and we'll take a look. All right. All right. When the sergeant and King reached the clearing, the cabin was dark. Looking. Oh, okay. One of us. King ran to the door. Their friend was inside. There was a scent of other men around the clearing, but it was faint. They had gone several hours before. King scratched at the door, anxious to lead his master to Harry. All right, boy. A man wounded. Don't wait a lamp. Harry had been sleeping, his fever gone. He woke up as the light filled the room and sprang to his feet. What the... Hello, Harry. Uh... You told me you were going to Whitehorse. Yeah, you and a lot of other people. It was to give myself an alibi. And you're admitting you held up the company's sled. You trailed me here, Sergeant, I guess you know. I always did say you were the best on the force. It was King who trailed you here. I didn't know who we were following. <laughs> Look at him licking your hand. Even now he thinks we've come here to help you. 
Why'd you do it, Harry? It seemed the only way to get the money Hank needed. How's the guard that I shot? He isn't hurt badly. How about you? Oh, I feel all right now. Then I'll have to take you back to Dawson. Put you in jail. Sure. I've got it coming. I don't mind that. I'm only sorry Hank will lose his claim now. You can still save that for him. How? You certainly want the gold, don't you? Carstairs has offered a $5,000 reward to anyone who brings you in. That is, unless I do it. You don't understand. You will be the one to do it. You say you're ready to take your medicine. I want to. Then you could drive back to Dawson and give yourself up. I... You'd let me do that? I know I wouldn't be taking any chance, Harry. You're right, Sergeant. Well, let's see. It's two in the morning. You'll have to be there by six this evening. You better get started right away. I don't know if my team's still around. There were a couple of men here. They carried me inside. That's all I remember. The dog's out and back, but if there were other men here... Harry, where's that gold? Oh, that's all right. I've hidden it in the woods. Well, let's get it and get you on your way. Right, Sergeant. I'll find my part and be right with you. But when Harry rolled back the red rock under which he had hidden the gold, Wait. there was nothing there. It's gone. They took it. Well, how could they have known where it was? It doesn't matter what they look like. One of them was big, as big as you are. Very dark and tough. He was wearing a black and white parka. I didn't actually see the other one. I only heard his voice. Are you going after them? King can trail them. You want me to wait here? No, you're still weak. You won't be able to travel fast. We'll have to start right now if you want to make it to Dawson by six. But the gold, The reward's sir. for your capture. I can bring the gold in later. Come on, let's go. The sergeant helped Harry get underway. And then he put King on the trail of the two men on their sled. Once the great dog realized what his master wanted, he led the team with unerring accuracy. They raced through the moonlit night. And just at dawn, they saw a campfire ahead. Keep the team quiet, boy. The sergeant's team drove toward the glow in silence. But the dogs around the campfire announced their coming. The sergeant saw two men standing by the campfire and recognized them. Lou Godwin and Jake Warren King, they're wanted in White Horse. The men started for their sled and then changed their mind. Slipping on snowshoes, they lifted a heavy bag from their sled and then plunged into the deep forest at the left of the trail. The sergeant stopped his team. Oh, King, hold your husky. Oh, no. He, too, put on snowshoes. And with King at his side, started into the shadowy depths of the forest. You're the one who has to find them, boy. King picked up the men's trail, and he and the sergeant followed it on and on into the forest. The sun was up now, but among the trees there was only a dim, mysterious twilight. Suddenly, King growled, and the sergeant saw a hulking shadow near a great fir tree. He dropped to the ground as the shot rang out. It was the beginning of the gunfight in the forest. Two men against one. Two men who were shooting to kill. Two men wanted for murder who knew the law was on their trail. But the sergeant closed in on them little by little, his gun answering their fire as they dodged from tree to tree, deeper and deeper into the forest. And then... Jake was hit and fell to the ground. He was carrying the gold, and Lou turned back to get it from him. The sergeant saw his opportunity and ran forward just as the burly killer bent over his fallen partner. You're covered, Lou. Drop your gun or I'll shoot. You're not going to take me in. Stab him, King! The great dog leaped forward. Lou was running desperately, but King closed the gap between them in a matter of seconds and dove for the man's feet. And a moment later, the sergeant pulled the outlaw up from the ground and leveled the gun at his heart. This is the end of the trail, Godwin. You're under arrest in the name of the Queen. Shortly before six o'clock that evening, Carstairs and the driver of the supply sled that had been held up were in the inspector's office. Well, your plan hasn't worked, Carstairs. No one has turned the hold-up man in, and there are only a few minutes to go before your deadline. Well, it may not have worked, but it was still the best way to catch the crook. The sergeant hasn't returned from his wild goose chase yet, has he? Not yet, but I... Come in. Sir, Harry Manners is out here. He wants to see you. What about? I don't know, sir. He'll only talk to you. All right. Send him in. Yes, sir. I knew it. What? You say my plan didn't work, but it has. And I've been right all along. It was Hank Manners who held up the sled. And now his own brother is coming here to inform against him. Pay him the reward as soon as you recover the gold. With Hank Manners in jail, my suit against him is won. You're not very smart, Costas. I don't suppose any man as vindictive as you could be. Inspector Conrad. Come in, Harry. What's on your mind? I want to give myself up. I'm the one who robbed the company sled yesterday. That's a lie. It's the truth. And I hear you've offered $5,000 to anyone who turns the hold-up man in. 
Well, I'm turning myself in and I'm claiming the reward. <coughs> You're lying. You're defending your brother. No, I'm not, Coster. If you took the gold, where is it? I had it, but it was taken away from me. Sergeant Preston's gone after the men who have it now. Hey, withdraw the reward. You can't make me pay it to him. He admits he doesn't have the gold. And he can't prove he took it. Say, Joe, this isn't the man who held you up, is he? No, sir. Yeah. Do you mean that after he's confessed, you're not going to press charges against him? And pay him $5,000? I should say not. Yeah. Then I guess we can't hold you, Harry. The men who have the gold now are the real crooks. And I insist that you arrest them. That's already been taken care of. What? Sergeant. You made it. Who are they, Sergeant? Whom have you arrested? Lou Godwin and Jake Warren, sir. Godwin and Warren? But the arrest was for that murder in Whitehorse, not for robbery. Where's my gold? Right here, every ounce of it. And they had it. Here, that's it. That's the bag he... I mean, that's the bag they took. All right, take it back to the office. Yes, sir. The matter's settled as far as I'm concerned, Inspector. I'm... I'm not going to pay any reward. Come on, Joe. He won't pay any reward, Harry. But he's giving you your freedom. It's more than I deserve. And there is a thousand dollars coming to you. What? The Yukon Bank in Whitehorse posted it for information leading to the arrest of Jake and Lou. You're the man who put me on their trail. But, Sergeant, a thousand It should help Hank a lot with his suit, and both you and he can make a living. After what I did... You're a very fortunate boy, Harry. I'm glad, though, that you're getting another chance. So am I. Don't worry. I'll never get a crazy idea like that again. (laughs) I promise you, King, I'll never let you down. Good. He doesn't like to put his friends behind bars, do you, boy? (laughs) No, it's all right, King. The case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's program. Say, here's a tip. Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice are never sold in bags or bulk. To get the famous crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns, always buy the big Quaker red and blue package. You'll go for both delicious kinds. For variety, eat Quaker puffed wheat one time, Quaker puffed rice the next. These tasty, king-size kernels shot from guns are made from only the premium grains. So for the best, always ask for Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the adventure of Manhunt. I helped a man escape from jail. He was a notorious criminal who'd long evaded the law, and yet when he was captured, I helped him to freedom. Freedom. Even though I realized that my job, my life, and my honor were at stake. I wonder how many of you would have done as I did. Be sure to hear this exciting story Wednesday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is ABC... The American Broadcasting Company.